What's up guys, Wes here. Today we're doing a review on this Harbor Freight tire machine I've had for over 10 years. The highway's loud, I live close to the highway. Uh, this will be uh, just a video on how I use it, maybe some things I've done to it to make it better. Because they are not that great when you get them brand new, so stay tuned and see what's up. Alright, first thing I want to talk about is the tool. I uh, ruined the original tubing pretty pretty early on, you know, within a couple of a couple of days of me using it. So this is a piece of schedule 40 like water pipe that I welded on really early on and it's never been a problem ever since. My brother has the same tire machine and he wrapped his, my friend Adam has one. Hi Adam. <laughs> wrapped it, you know, he's bent and we did the same thing to his. So if you get one of these, first thing you want to do is either find a buddy of yours that can weld or if you got a welder, cut a piece of some heavy duty pipe cut the ends off and just weld them onto a piece of something heavy duty. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is, okay, this thing is on a pallet, right? A lot of people are like, oh, don't put them on a pallet. But this is a pallet made of 4x4s and 2x6s. You know, so not all pallets are created equally. So, if you don't got access to a concrete slab, Either make a pallet like this, or I got this on a low ceramic tile. Second thing, these are just bolted normally, and I've welded all this together years ago. I've gotten a lot better at welding since then, but that made a big difference. Uh, also, I welded this cross strap in to make it a little stronger. It used to come apart, you know, it bend off to one side. Uh, so that's another thing I've done. Recently, there's like a little metal uh, pin. There's a handle right here that come on that br it breaks off. You know, I had this thing for 10 years, or, you know, nine, nine and a half years before this broke. So this may not be a problem. I just, I've used the heck out of this thing. And, uh, Finally, ah, this little guy. This thing is supposed to be that holds your rim down. I have welded this back together probably 30 times, you know. It's kind of a piece of crap. I made another one. Let me see if I can find it. This is the one I made. You know, and uh, it works for some mag wheels. I made it all out of the similar thickness of metal, and they didn't. I thought that was dumb. They used thin pipe, and then these thicker pieces are like 3 16 or something. So, that's something you might want to make new or whatever, you know. But, uh, so, let's uh, do a tire right now. I'm in the middle of taking my, my snow tires off. There's not much studs left in these guys, but the sun's setting. I'm sorry about the weird lighting. Taking my snow tires off and putting some summers on, so let's uh, let's do that. All right, guys. First tip I'm going to give you, breaking the bead on this thing, it'll fight you if you don't do this right. There's a little, see this little triangle shaped chunk here? You want to either put the rim right on this lip or just right behind it here, whatever works. If you're having trouble getting the bead, try to get it right up on the lip. Try to hook the corner of this lip on the corner of this piece of metal, a little triangle. So I'm going to... These are mag wheels and I, they've been off pretty recently so they're not going to be too hard to do. So all you do, some of this stuff might be 
old news, you know, but if you're just buying one of these, this is this is how you do it. You get this little guy, this little chuck, hook it on the edge of your rim, insert your tool into the lever. And that's pretty easy, you know. If you do it right, you know. The front one's always easier because it has less to travel. There's only like uh, three quarters of an inch or an inch or something there. And the back one, this one, this is where it can get tough. You know, you kind of do the same thing, pull it up to onto that little metal triangle standy thing. Get your little start it in the rim. And this one's always tougher. See, it doesn't want to, so just get it started a little bit, right? I like to set it up on my shoulder, get a little turn, reinstall your chuck. See that, and it's still not, not there yet, so you got to turn it again. And that should be it. Sometimes you have to, some rims will be harder. If they haven't been off in a long time. You have to go all the way around, maybe twice. I've had to do it twice or three times on a rim that's been on for five years. But uh, it's not bad. Before, that's why I added this little cross base, cross brace, is because this thing would like bend over to one side or the other with all the force. Because you're putting your whole body weight. You know, I weigh like 200 pounds plus leverage. You know, three or four hundred pounds of you're putting on this thing. So there's my pug. Hi, Dougie Doug. Say hi to the camera, old pug. All right, now we'll uh, put this up on the top. Here's my chihuahua, too. <laughs> and I'll put this on top, and we'll see uh, what I do to get the tire off the bead. There's a little couple of little tricks, so hold on a second. Oh, yeah. I gotta do this a little different because I'm missing my little post. Otherwise, you try to guide that post into a lug hole. I'll use my derelict. I mean, where's my? I got a. I got a bolt here. It's my. My solution is just a bolt, a little body fender bolt. <coughs> this is just with mine. I have a bolt through the hole. You get your little triangle down. This is a weird old third gen Camaro wheel, so it works better that the thing's bent. Screw the nut on. Take your tool. Give her a little snuggy snug. A couple things you're gonna need. Well, one thing really. This is just uh, soapy water. Oh no! Don't buy your squirt bottles at the dollar store. Cut! Cut! Well, I was. Gonna try to find another squirt bottle, but we're just gonna have to struggle. This one kind of works. Kind of, it's kind of working. The lubrication is also, uh, also optional. It's up to you. Okay. So, what you do, pretty simply, you get your bar into the tire and then you hook the tire into the deepest part of the rim. Then you just yank it around the corner. It's pretty easy, really. This thing will kick your butt. That's another hard little trick to do. You gotta hook it in there and then kind of snap up over while keeping the lower bead down in the deep part of the rim. Then it'll get hard. See, so it's like, ugh, stop. So you just hook around the other side. Go the other direction. There you go. Tire off. It's not even that hard, really. I mean, I've seen guys struggle doing this. It's not that hard. Let me get this other tire ready and uh, we'll continue on. All right. These are 20570 15s. This first speed. Take some hand strength, but you can just push it on. You keep kind of just working it. Work it, work it. 
See? No tool. The second side, though, this is probably the hardest part, is getting the last bead on. Uh, it's what I struggle with the most without being taught. Uh, I did have a friend who had one of these, and he helped me a lot. You know, it's always nice to ask somebody if you don't know. Again, uh, we'll just put a little lube on there. Buy your stuff at the dollar store. Harbor Freight's one thing, but man, dollar store, man. Dang. Okay. I always look for the valve stem. You see that? Camera guys, editing guys, zoom in. Valve stem. Okay. Get your tire up under that and under this lip here. This is aluminum rim. It's a little weirder, but it's, it's not always like this. But try to push it on as far as you can. If you're real, real manly, you don't even need a tool. Okay, but if you did need a tool, you hook this, get up under the little lip that was left over, stick it in there, kind of go as far as you can to the edge, work it over, little bites, little bites. Alright fellas, it's getting dark quick, so here's the valve stem trick. I got the valve stem out, no tool. I got an air chuck down there. We'll use that in a second, but to get it popped on the bead, just kind of push her up, jam this thing on there. Boom, look at that. We are on. Usually I can uh, uh, get the valve stem in real quick, but I'm uh, working a camera today. If you're quick, you can get this in before it lets all the air out. Like my little valve stem. I have a valve stem screwdriver, but I can't find it. It's kind of nice having a valve or an air tool that has a gauge on it. You check your tire. Every tire is a little different. This one says maximum PSI, 44 PSI, so we'll go to we'll go to 40. A little over 45. It's good for gas mileage. All right, sun's going down. It's getting a little darker, but I wanted to show you. I'm putting the last tire on, and that other one went really smoothly. But they don't all go like that. So I wanted to show you my how I would work on the last little bit of the tire. Uh, this one I didn't lube up, so it'd go a little harder, I guess. You know, but these are uh, good tires, so they go on easy. Big rims. That's another thing, you know, a lot of guys show you how to do little tiny tires. So that's why I did a 15 inch full size car tire. These are off my 79 Malibu. You know, 15s. So let's show you what I do here. Make sure that's tight. What you do is you get your little duck bill tool, you hook it up under the tire, and then you push it all the way until, you, until it stops. Get it under there. See, it's right up to the edge of where the tire goes in, and then little tiny bite. All right, hook it around. Do it again on this side for visual so you can see better. Push it all the way until it kind of stops. If you go in the middle, you know, I, like I did on the mini bike, I just did little tiny bites, but it, this one really makes, you can rip your bead on these. So you go as far as you can, little, little tiny bites. And then you get to the point where it'll just pop on. So, I just want to show you that. The other tire went on so easy. They don't always do that. You know, they don't always just fly on. Here's another thing. Sometimes it doesn't want to blow up. So, you, a good trick my brother kind of showed me this years ago. You push the back bead down as far as you can. And then, it helps you got two people. Kind of hold up on it as you put the air to it. A 
work out. This clip might make it to the cutting room floor. There we go. That's another thing about this. Without a tool, it holds itself on there, which can be dangerous because it'll freaking blow sometimes. Ah! I hate this part. When you put lube on, it doesn't go so dangerous, scary like. Bong! There we go. I don't know how this is all going to be edited together, but we'll see. I'm trying to get this valve stem back on. Use that trick. Damn it. Get your tool in there. Click, 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 click. I don't know if I'm going to include this part. Because that was a little harder. There you go, boys. I'm taking all the weights off this rim. Front and back. Weights are a myth, guys. Just something they get to charge you a little bit more for. Unless you got like a four-wheel drive truck with big old baloney tires, but most of the time you don't even need weights. You just need good straight rims, good tires in good condition. There's my review. Bottom line, would I buy one of these again? Yes, I would. This thing, it, it cost me 45 bucks, which at my local uh, tire shop, it's like $60, $65 to do a set of tires. So the first time I used this thing, it paid for itself. Really, I mean, it was $45, $40 or something like that. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's not for everyone. You know, like a couple of guys say that if you really like your rims, it can do damage to your rims. Yes, it can. You know, but honestly, most of the rims I have are old, you know, old car rims. Look at the sun shedding on my face. That's better. They're old rims, you know, that, um, you know, a couple of extra scratches you aren't going to notice, you know. But there's things to do, you know, you can wrap tape around your tool. You can pad your clamp with uh, some, you know, electrical tape or a piece of cloth or rags or something like that. But honestly, I love this thing. I'm getting out of the good light again. Uh, I've had it for years and I really like it. Uh, I'd buy another one in a heartbeat. If uh, this one disappeared... I just go get another one. I do like I did. I weld it up. So uh, I don't know how long this video is going to be. A little short one. I just want to let you know what I thought of the Harbor Freight tire machine. And uh, so you guys like and subscribe. Uh, I'm up to 85 subscribers. It's great. You know, one day I'll be at the thousand. I'll be monetized. Honestly, I wanted to say uh, you know that I have a video that has 7,000 views. Okay, so. If one in seven people who've watched that video subscribe, I would be monetized. And that would mean a lot to me, you know. I could That way I could buy equipment. Like today, you can see here, I tried. I got a lapel mic set up off eBay. I'm having trouble figuring it out. I had to get adapters and stuff. You know, I use my cell phone. Like a lot of other guys, small channels do. I use my cell phone. And it works. The quality's not too bad. You know, I can, if it gets quiet, I can edit it up, the volume up in a video, you know, so that's it. Uh, thank everybody for watching. You know, thanks for some of, my, some of you guys watch all my videos. I want to thank you very much. So uh, you guys all stay safe out there. We're still in the middle of this craziness. So, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So see you guys in the next video. Take her easy. What are you looking at? Hey guys, another pro tip. After you put your tires on, you gotta go for a little drive. Listening to Van Halen is optional.